Hello, my name is Michael Stütz. And my name is Bartholomew Samet. And together we run the Exposed Quiff and Festival Berlin. And that is happening from the 21st to the 24th of May here in uh, Kino Movimento. Well, this year it's the 10th edition of the Exposed Queer Film Festival. And you started in 2006. But how did you get started? Like, who had the idea? How was the first festival? <laughs> <laughs> it looks at me. He has to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, um, I had the idea when I was in Australia. I wanted to come back to Berlin and do uh, a film program during the Pride Week. And uh, Australia was having a, quite a good few years of uh, producing queer short films. So I thought, let's give some exposure to these filmmakers and do something at an international event. And um, there was nothing really happening in Berlin at that time during the film week. So I was contacting everyone from Australia, seeing if anyone would want to help out, because um, I didn't really have any contacts here. And then contacted um, the Teddy Foundation, and then they put me in contact with Schwartz, and then it all just sort of went ahead. And then I was expecting maybe, you know, 20 people or so to come, but it was like full, like maybe 130 or something like that in Schwartz. And we were, yeah, overwhelmed, I guess. <laughs> and very excited and then had that stupid idea, let's do it again. <laughs> so we did. And you started off in Schwartz, by now yep. you're in Movimiento. What happened in between? Oh my God, it was 10 years. <laughs> Can you see it? <laughs> so much. Uh, what happened? I mean, we, I always wanted to stay in Schwartz, I think, because I like that idea of showing films out of a cinema in different areas and also in like an institution like Schwartz. And so we stayed there for as long as we could, but it got a little bit difficult as the program developed into the land and region focus because a lot of the films that we were then showing, like in the Turkish year or in the Middle East year, there was a lot of subtitles. And that's hard for an audience in that sort of area to see subtitles because the screen, it's not really built for films to show with subtitles. So we really needed like a cinema and that's when we decided we need to move to a cinema. And we went kind of through um, Schwartz and then kind of transitioned as well to Eyesight and then to Movimento. Mm -hmm. And this is... It's the third year yeah. here. And you started it and how did you get involved? Um, well, we met at the Berlinale, at the Panorama section, where we both work. I started to work there in 2006, and Bart joined in 2009, I think. Yeah. And I've been to Exposed, I think, for the first time in 2007. I didn't know you back then. But I then. found a photo of you there. But I went there <laughs> with uh, Mabel and Nina Hagen, I think. <laughs> she was <laughs> blowing a whistle the whole time. And <laughs> was high or something. <laughs> but it was fun. So, <laughs> so I knew the festival, and I, I really liked it back then. And um, and I went back also another time, and then, I don't know, somehow you asked me, I think. It, Begged or pleaded. Help. No, you asked me <laughs> if I would uh, join, and I said yes, of course. So in 2011, I started to join them and worked on the 2012 edition for the Middle East Focus. That's how mm -hmm. we started, and that um, was the year where we were, for the opening night, still at Schwitz, but moved then to Eisenzeit Kino the other two days, and in 2013, we had an Austrian avant-garde focus, and uh, that's when we moved completely into Movimento, mm. which was a good, great step. Oh yeah, that's a very good step. Yeah. Berlin is quite a creative city. There are lots of festivals going on. What makes your festival special? I mean, why should people choose to come here and not go somewhere else? That's a good question. <laughs> well, because we're showing films that are not shown anywhere else in Berlin or even at other film festivals or queer film festivals. Um, we're showcasing a lot of Berlin-based young filmmakers in our program since years, and um, I think that's also something that's important. Also films that are not made for you know, commercial use or for commercial cinema. It's a more experimental, underground, feminist, expositive kind of cinema. And um, so we show a lot of these works, which are, um, I think, very important. Because unfortunately, you know, many film festivals do not embrace those works enough, especially within the LGBTQ film festival community. Because some people, you know, they might be afraid of that people won't come to the screenings and we have to show two difficult films that are not narrative enough and those kind of things. And I think it's very important to 
keep up that work and show those films because these are the films that mostly interest us and that mm, for us also mostly you know have the most long longevity mm -hmm. did you say that yeah. longevity yeah yeah so we're interested in that and i think the mixture of films that we have is also something that makes the festival special and the place and the people that come here you know it's a mixture of the people who live here the people who visit berlin you know so it's uh, i think it's what is screened on um, what is a screen in a cinema is also sort of a reflection of what goes on in the city somehow. Mm -hmm. That's true. No, that's good. In a <laughs> nutshell, exactly. Yeah. yeah. We don't or at least segregate. that's what we're trying to do, you know. Yeah. You already said that the mixture is special. Well, you started off as a queer short film festival. By now, you also you developed into a festival that also shows long movies. Um, what is so special about the short films? Why? Why do you embrace them? Why do you like them so much? What's yeah, special about this form? <laughs> I think um, it takes an extreme amount of talent to make any sort of film, but also to make a great short film, it's harder to tell a complete story in say under five or 10 minutes, you know? Whereas in the future, you can really spread out and develop and really build something, you know, create a pace or momentum, but to really tell something in a short amount of time, you know, you have to have a lot of talent. And this talent is always the most exciting when you see it. So we see some films and we think, holy shit, this is fucking great, you know, or we have no idea what it means. So <laughs> we have to show it because maybe then we can figure it out or maybe then when the filmmakers here, they can tell us a little bit about it and um, help us figure it out. You know, this, I don't know, the short film's exciting. Yeah. It's an exciting uh, form. Absolutely, it's, it's a form you know where a lot of experimentation happens, and, and aesthetically, formally, but also in terms of narrative. And what's also wonderful is like you know you don't have just the single short films, but you put them in programs. You know, so have oh, yeah, we have like fine. five programs, and it's 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 always great and challenging to pick. You know, you you choose the films because of what they are, you know, as an entity. But then um, in the end, you start to program, um, and you you know have to think about which films go into which program together and how do you play them in which order, you know, which, you know, can be very interesting, you know. And uh, this is something that's really fascinating in a mm. way because this, you know, you can express something with it. What do you put next to story. each other, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you more in favor of like showing films that kind of are aesthetically sort of the same or have like the same approach or are you really trying to show completely different things next to each other, like for instance, a, you know, a gay narrative next to a feminist porn film, you know, mm. which and which also brings, which we like to do, yes, yeah. <laughs> like rough edges, like really surprise people also, which what comes next, okay. instead of showing something that is rather similar. So that's what we're trying to do, and it also is interesting because it brings in a lot of different people, and they see films that they otherwise might not have, mm. you know. Mm. There's this trend or a lot at some other um, festivals where they would group things oh, yeah, into programs. I mean, it's it's an interesting way as well to program, like all the lesbian shorts in one program, all the gay shorts in one program. Yeah, you but see it's how many gay people you see in the lesbian shorts program? Not many. Yeah, so unfortunately. Yeah, but as, yeah, I mean that's an easy way to program, I think, and it's also um, a bit too. Segregative yes, it absolutely is. I yeah. mean, I think that's not what you know. Berlin doesn't definitely not stand for you know. Yeah, mm. and uh, I think the people are also not interested in those kind of mm. program you know decisions or techniques. I think they really want to see a wide range of um, themes and topics and, and, and gender. Mm. You know. So. Yeah. And <clears throat> from what it sounds like, it also broadens the perspective of the perspectives of the people that go and watch. The, the slots of the short films mm. because they see mm. different things and not just one topic. Mm. They'll come out with big white eyes. <laughs> Shocked. <Very good. laughs> oh my god, never seen a vagina that big before. <laughs> in my life. We've had those reactions. It's wonderful, <laughs> exactly what we wanted. Exactly, yes. <laughs> yeah. But can you point out some of the highlights of this year's program? I can. In general or shorts? Or in general. Oh my god, there's so many. They're all highlights. Everything's a highlight. It's very <laughs> hard. We're building a, over there in the corner there, we're going to build an installation. It's called the Naughty Room. And we're going to have porn films shown on a loop, like every night Curated at by the Berlin Porn Film Festival for us. Exactly. Because mm -hmm. they're also doing their 10th anniversary this year too. 
So that's a highlight and that's some sort of direction that we want to go to in the future as well. And uh, Please Like Me, I think, is a highlight. This TV series from Australia, it's hilarious and really funny, and, um, but not just funny. No, there's more to it, it than just, uh, the, I mean, it's, it's a comedy, of course, but yeah. it's, it's a comedy with depth and written with wit, and it's very, very interesting. And uh, yeah. of course, in, this, in the beginning, there's a coming out, but it's not a typically coming out story because it, it embraces so many other things surrounding the, the, the main character, you know, from the mother who's mentally ill to all of his friends and everything. So it's, it's, it's a really interesting contemporary view, I would yeah. say. Yeah. In and general, not just Australia, but in general. Yeah. And we haven't shown a TV series before, so it's a first and for us. And it's not very well known here. It got really good reviews like in, in America and everywhere, and it's running there as well. So it has its kind of a core audience, I think, but it's not that well known here. So we thought, you know, let's show it here. We're showing yeah. the whole first season yeah. on Saturday it's evening, and it's, it's, it's interesting to see how people will respond to that, you know. So mm -hmm. hopefully, if they come, they will love it. That's I like for this sure. Spooky sound in the background. It's really good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, there's. I mean, the short, all short film programs are, are very diverse and very mixed. So I think it's, you know everybody has to see for themselves what speaks most to them when they take a look at the program. From the feature films, I would really recommend, or for me, um, from my perspective, uh, Fort Buchanan, which screens on Sunday evening at six by American filmmaker Benjamin Crotty, who lives, in, lives and works in Paris, uh, which is a wonderful, odd, but very original art, French artist film mixed with uh, kind of soap opera-like you know, dialogues. Yeah, yeah, No, he took, actually, the, the dialogues in the film are actually from soap operas. He took them, mm -hmm. translated them. That's what he wanted to do. <laughs> and then shot it aesthetically in a very specific way, you know, and then I think the group of actresses, some are friends, some are professional actresses, so like this whole mixture, this whole very specific microcosm and the story that he tells with it, you know, is, is wonderful. It's wonderful and really original. I was very, I saw it last year at a festival and I was very stunned by it and I thought it's perfect to screen it. And he will come, so it's, it's wonderful to have him here and talk about the film as well. So this is one of my highlights. Mm. And, um, the midnight snack screenings yes. are highlights too, because <laughs> we want to show things going late into night, more into the genre field of queer film. And so we have two really intense films that are going to show: Amori Turner and Heterophobia. I want to say hilarious, but, you know, maybe only Heterophobia is kind of hilarious, but <laughs> it's also uh, a completely different film. You need mm. to. Yeah. You need to see it. It's you need very to see hard it to believe to it, I guess. Uh, it's like a feverish kind of hallucinatory yeah. dream. It's Acid very, trip. yeah, it's very trippy. Yeah. How do you find these films? Well, some through research, some through festivals where we go to. Like for Buchanan, I saw at a festival, as well as Appropriate Behavior, who was, you know, who had like quite a bus actually after its Sundance premiere. Mm. And, um, Oh, Heterophobia, nice. we that was through a work at the Berlin Alley, actually. Hmm. So yeah, mainly from other festivals and... Yes, uh, the short films more through research, I must okay. say. Not much through the festivals we go to, but mostly through research. A little bit through other programs that we, from festivals that we know and like. Yeah. But it's mostly through research or the connections you develop, you know, the networking. Mm -hmm. You do, you know, with the filmmakers here in Berlin or somewhere else. You know, sometimes you kind of, you know, there's a bond, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. A lot of the Australian ones I had seen or programmed when I was working for eCarpet, a TV show in Australia. Mm -hmm. And they would show lots of um, uh, experimental or very short, smart, short films. And um, we're always looking for films that push the boundaries or... Um, confuse people because it was like a late night Saturday night TV show and so there's a lot of them that I remembered from them and then of course that TV show doesn't exist anymore so there was no one there to then kind of pass on the contacts so then you have to do all this other sort of stalking and then you find it hmm. so yeah so we've got some good <laughs> classics from there yeah. and you also have something here which is called the queer film funds can you explain what exactly that is the queer, 
That's right. It's money. It's money. <laughs> we're, we're giving back money to the. Oh, we're, we uh, got finally some um, support financially this year from the city, from the uh, cultural fund of Friedrichshain Kreuzberg, the district, which was very nice. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, partly we gave that money or we put that money into a queer film fund, short film fund, um, which is uh, for short films projects in development. Um, and um, people submitted their works, their scripts and the visual documents and whatever they had. And uh, last week we went through all the submissions and we um, picked uh, five projects to be in the final round to pitch their projects um, personally to the festival jury, who then will pick a winner of those five projects. The winner will get then 2,000 euros cash to help make their short film. The short films are all like under 10 minutes, so it's kind of a good amount of money to go towards a production. And then they also get 2,000 euros worth of equipment hire from 25P Cine Support. So it's like almost like 4,000 euros to go towards their budget right, of a short yeah. film. And it's pretty good, actually, because a lot of short films get made sometimes for less, you know, or they get made for a lot more, and then they have to look for all these ways to try and find funding. And sometimes to get queer film funding is difficult when you have a queer topic. Hmm. So we thought this is a kind of a good way to push the queer film forward. And it is forward. for Berlin-based filmmakers. Hmm. Exactly. Not Berlin-born or German-born, Berlin-based. So people <laughs> just have to work and live here. <laughs> yeah. And that's, uh, then they're eligible. And uh, yeah, and the five projects, I think, are very interesting, very, and very diverse, and uh, <laughs> all, f all by female directors yeah. and producers. With, um, Female or transgender topics, but mostly feminist, very, I would say. Very, very, very yeah. different topics. Very and gender narrative. fluid sometimes, but not very male oriented, no. Mm. I think they're like maybe a, a man in the there. corner somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> but those were the ones, you know, that really spoke to us the most. And correct me if I'm wrong, but that's the Lolly Awards. Mm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The Lolly Awards, I think we started in 2005 when we did our German. Uh, focus and uh, yeah we've done them every year since then and we give like a lolly award to the best um, exposed short which is a short that shows in the focus program and then a lolly award for the best German short and then a lolly award for the best international short and uh, and then also we're giving away then the queer film fund this year and, and an audience an audience lolly award so the shorts. audience can vote for their favorite short and, and then but it could win but that means that the film funding is not connected to the no. Lolly Awards. No. Oh, okay. Because the Lolly Award so is a lovely award. Mm -hmm. It's like it's like a teddy, but it's not a teddy. It's like a lolly. It's like a mixture between a teddy and a lolly. If they got together, had a rough night, and had a bastard child, it would be a lolly. It's a very creative, funny looking thing. <laughs> yeah. People usually really like because they never. It's edible. Yeah. They can eat it if they want to. Parts of it. This yeah. year might not be edible though. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just. Uh, it's just the honor. It's an honor. <laughs> it's an honor. It's always good to win an award. I think awards sometimes can help push a film further into the festival life. You they know, can once use they've it, won yes. a few awards, you know, other people, other festival programmers look at it a bit more seriously. So that's kind of one of the reasons why we want to base to invent this sort of prize. So we can also push the films that screen here into other festivals. Mm. Yeah. And apart from the award and the film screening, you will also have a big opening party, right? Oh, yeah. When does that take place and where? It's and what do we have to expect? Oh, oh expect the unexpected. We're, no, it's really a special evening. It's very yeah. unexpected. We don't know what to expect now. True. Parts yeah. of it we don't know yet. Yeah. Uh, we have, well, after our screening of um, Priscilla, um, the adventures of Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, the iconic uh, Australian a queer film classic. Uh, we uh, go to Südblock on Cottbuser Tor, which has been home for our opening party since for the years? third year now. Yeah. Um, and we have there, we're going to show a special video made by um, an English uh, video artist, visual artist, and DJ of Jeffrey Hinton, who was a very close collaborator and friend of uh, the late performer Lee Bowery. And uh, he made a special 25-minute uh, video of uh, 
the times of the 80s they had together, performances, but also private moments, the surroundings, the club that he run. So all sorts of impressions, I think, and it's uh, something that has never been shown anywhere. And uh, Libari, is some, he's not so well known anymore, but he was... Australian icon. Australian icon who lived and worked in London most of his time and was really influential towards people like Lady Gaga, the costume she's doing. Like A lot of stuff comes from what he did. Very outrageous costumes. He did a lot of, a lot of life drag performances on the streets in London, you know, like really queering the city with mm -hmm. his presence, very big man. Um, very big presence, big personality. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah, so he was a super fascinating figure. Actually, the, um, the, the, the motif on our, <laughs> on our poster and our, you know, the artwork, actually. This is a little bit of a, uh, it's not exactly, but it's a little bit of... Uh, that, uh, it's quite Lee an Bowery, homage to his. It, it is an homage because he posed for uh, Lucien Freud, the famous painter. Did a few um, portraits of him, and on one he's like naked, looking back from uh, over his shoulder. So this is a little bit of a mm. homage to this kind of work. Of yeah. course, it's very specific and very different here as well. Yeah. But um, <laughs> it's a whole other thing. So there's Lee Bowery a little bit in the artwork as well. So yeah. this is something we're super excited about. And he, he has Jeffrey has shown his work at the National gallery in London and those kind of works, but he put that specially for us together. So that's something I think everybody can... We've seen can bits of it, but we haven't seen the whole thing. No, so we're going to see two yeah. for the first time, more yeah. or less. But yeah. it's going to be great. And I think people can really look forward to that. And pornographic warning in there as A pornographic well. warning pornographic a little warning, bit. Pornographic warning, apparently. Yeah, so, yeah, <laughs> that's going to be that's going to be a special screening that we're going to do. We always tend to do a special screening at the Block. And then there's uh, Divon Davon. That are going to play live for a Berlin band? D von der von, yeah. D von der von. Mm. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, D von der von. Yeah. And then um, Maria Psycho is going to do a performance as well, I think, a balloon monster. A balloon monster, and she's going to, it's going to be with a Skype connected, uh, we're going to screen it actually. She's going to walk down on Oranienstraße. Interesting. Maybe we shouldn't say that, I don't know. I don't know if we should say anything. But it's going to be a special performance. Yeah, we won't say anything. Also a little bit, we, we also a little bit kind of a Lee Bowery homage, I think. I, I don't think we can say that either. I do say that. You do say that. Yes. I, I just know it's going to be insane and great. Yeah. Well, then... Yeah. Then and then A-plays minus plays as well. <laughs> he played last year until 5 or 6 in the morning and everyone was dancing the whole time. It was great. Yeah. Then I would say we look forward to the big opening party and we all... Yes. We'll be surprised about what was <laughs> what is going to happen, and uh, I wish you a very good festival Thanks. and a lot of interesting Q and A's mm. and good screenings. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.